Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Arithmetic Lesson 150. Today, we're going to start by going over your homework. Yesterday's homework was on page 270, Lesson 149. The first question says, 2 over 5 times 3 over 6. I should have got 3 tenths. And 1 and 1 fourth times 4 fifths equals 1 whole. 10 and 3 eighths sorry, 10 times 3 eighths equals 3 and 3 fourths. And the last one, 7 over 9 times 3 over 5. When you cancel out, you should get 7 over 15. Good job. I hope all you, you all got all four of those questions correct. It wasn't hard. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So today we're going to start with a review, multiply, multiplication facts. Go ahead and begin when the timer starts. Remember you're saying it six times three equals 18. I was gonna do it with you. Let's see how well I do. Ready? Go ahead, make sure you're singing, saying it with me. Six times three equals 18. Nine times three equals 27. Eight times four equals 32. Nine times two equals 18. Six times five equals 30. Five times four equals 20. Three times nine equals 18. Sorry, 27. 6 times 6 equals 36. 4 times 4 equals 16. 2 times 8 equals 16. 6 times 9 equals 54. 4 times 7 equals 28. 4 times 3 equals 12. 2 times 3 equals 6. 7 times 2 equals 14. 5 times 8 equals 40. 8 times 2 equals 16. 8 times 6 equals 48. 5 times 5 equals 25. 9 times 9 equals 81. 7 times 9 equals 63. 6 times 8 equals 48. 4 times 2 equals 8. 4 times 6 equals 24. 9 times 6 equals 54. 8 times 8 equals 64. 8 times 9 equals 72. 8 times 7 equals 56. 6 times 7 equals 42. 7 times 5 equals 35. 7 times 7 equals 49. Oh, halfway. Boys and girls, did you beat me? Very good. Very good. I'm sure you did. Go ahead and <clears throat> you take a deep breath. Whew. All right. So let's review a few things we've been doing the last few days um, about these different geometry shapes. This one here, the first one is what we call an angle. The next one, do you remember? Good. A line segment. Remember the segment has two endpoints. And the one with one endpoint and one arrow, what is that called? Good, it's a ray. And the easiest, I mean, the hardest one at all, of all, that's the point, very good. And the two lines that cross, we call those intersecting lines. Um, on both sides with the arrow, we call that just a regular line. Excellent. The two lines that never touch, they can go on and on and on and on, and on forever, but they'll never touch. Just like the roads that are side by side, they'll never touch that way. Very good, they are per parallel lines. And the two angles that are the same. Good, congruent, say it again, congruent angles. And the one with the little box in the, uh, uh, right by the angle, what kind of angle is that? It was 90 degrees, right angle, very good. 90 degrees or right angle. And the, line with two right angles, what do we call that? Where two lines meet and it's exactly making two right angles. Perpendicular, say it again, perpendicular. Good, make sure you're repeating that so you know exactly how to pronounce it, perpendicular. All right, today we're gonna move on to something um, a little bit more in depth about uh, geometry. I'm sure you guys have um, seen this over the years. We're just going to go a little bit more into depth and making sure that you understand what exactly these are. A square, we know is a polygon. We know it has four sides. We know that all four sides are the same. We know that all four sides are right angles, okay? A lot of things about that square. And a lot of things are squares, right? Four sides, four angles. All of them are right angle. All of the sides are the same size right? Okay. A rectangle. A rectangle, again, four sides. So it's a parallel. I mean, yeah, it's a parallelogram, um, but only two sets of parallel lines, right? Just like the square, two sets of parallel lines. Also, it has um, two sides that are the same size and two sides that are the same size. 
okay? So um, that's a rectangle. Next, a parallelogram. Parallelogram, again, has two sets of parallel sides. So even though the parallelogram looks like this, this one is slanted, but also um, the rectangle and the square are also parallelograms, right? Because they're both have two sets of parallel lines. How about the rhombus? Remember what we said about the rhombus? The rhombus is, again, almost like that parallelogram. Um, the rhombus is kind of slanted, right? It doesn't have right angles, okay? It doesn't necessarily have right angles. If it had a right angle, it would be a square. But um, all four sides are the same. It does have four, four sides and four, ang four angles. And all those sides are the same size. Now the triangle, triangle has three sides, three, and it does not have, there, there are many different triangles you'll learn in the next few years, um, depending on what size the, the sides are. Um, but at this point, if you're looking at this one on the screen, this is what we call a right angle triangle, a right triangle, because you'll, you'll notice that the, um, the angle on the bottom is a right angle even though I didn't put the, the little square in it, okay? But if you're looking at your worksheet today on page 271, um, these are the, these are the um, first set. So it says give them the common name for each shape. That's what these are. So you can go ahead and do that. As far as temperature goes, um, let's review this chart. Two minutes. Um, this chart, you can say, this chart is um, of your temperature. You wanna make sure that you know the freezing point of water in both Fahrenheit and Celsius, 32 degrees in Fahrenheit and zero in Celsius. The boiling point of water, again, two temperatures, one in Fahrenheit, one in Celsius, 200 degrees, 212 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 in Celsius. And your normal body temperature, even though this kid looks a little sick, hopefully he's not, but your normal body temperature would be at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and 37 degrees Celsius. You don't have to worry about conversions yet. That'll be in fifth grade. We'll make you do that. All right, so I want to take away this chart and see if you know what temperature this is. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Good, that's the freezing point. 100 degrees Celsius. Excellent. 37 degrees Celsius. Good, you got it. And 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Excellent, make sure you're studying that chart. You could always go back and reference it. All righty here, we have two story problems and then we'll let you go for the day. Mr. Cow spent $18.97 on flowers for his wife. He gave the florist a $20 bill. What coins did, did it, I'm sorry. What coins did, and bills did he receive as change? So think about it. Remember, we're going back for, backwards. We have $20. We're going to subtract $18.97. And then we're going to see what coins and what um, dollar bills he should get back. So first you're going to subtract and you're going to get how much? Good. $1 and how much change? Excellent. So how are we going to give that back to the how, how is the clerk going to give that back to us, to Mr. Cow? All right, so you need three pennies first, and then a dollar, very good. All right, your last one. The candle was 10 inches long. This is a hard one. It was 10 inches long. Each half hour, three-fourths of an inch of the candle burned away. After four hours, how long did the can how long was the candle after that? So you take three-fourths of an inch each half hour. How many half hours are in four hours? Excellent, eight. So we're going to multiply three-fourths times eight. Good, and when you do that, what do you end up with? Don't forget to cancel. Good, so you should have six inches, okay? Six inches were burned off, but it's not asking how many were burned off. It says how many, how long was the candle after it burned off? Good, so you subtract 10 minus six. And what's your answer? Amazing, four inches, very good. 
Okay, you are going to finish this worksheet. You are going to um, finish both sides, 271 and 272, and we will see you back for your next lesson tomorrow. Have a great day.